Hello, my name is Paul Mott and I'm with Coyote Vest. Today I'd like to demonstrate some of the features of the Coyote Vest and how it is intended to protect your dog from various types of predatory attacks. So here we're using a small uh, stuffed animal which is not anatomically correct but is a nice way to demonstrate how the vest fits on a typical dog. And here I have the actual skull from a coyote. This is the kind of thing you, you can buy off of eBay if you, if you really want to. And if you've never seen one up close, this is basically the threat that we're trying to deal with. And you can see how the teeth are quite long. They're not razor sharp, but they're sharp. And I'm assuming that, uh, like a dog, a younger coyote has sharper teeth, and as they get older and they wear down, uh, they get a little bit more dull. But this is actually the thing that's going to kill your dog, and this is what we're trying to defend against. So, um, in order to defend against this threat, the first thing we're going to do is put some spikes around the dog's neck. So, uh, the coyote is larger than your dog, and he's coming in for his attack, and he's almost always going to try and go for the neck. And you can see here that that's really not going to be a successful proposition for him because of all these spikes. And uh, it's pretty difficult to go anywhere around his neck without having one of these spikes either hitting him in the bottom or the top of his mouth. So that's definitely a deterrent. And even if he, he does get through, this collar is a triple laminated Kevlar, so um, it's going to withstand that pressure. Now, uh, a lot of pictures you'll see on the internet will show that a dog has been bitten in this way or this way probably because the coyote is literally trying to pick up the dog and he's going for the center of gravity. He doesn't want the dog flopping this way or, or you know, he wants to dominate the dog. He wants to be in control. So the closer he is to the neck, the less chance your dog can turn around and bite back. But if that's not working out, he'll, he'll move down here and bite somewhere. So we want to make sure that if he does get through here, can we withstand the pressure that he's going to be putting? So inside the coyote vest, we have these double laminated panels on the side of the vest, which uh, will withstand a coyote attack. And to demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to use a couple of pieces of uh, Kevlar, and I'm going to use this metal spike, which I think is maybe a little sharper than the coyote tooth, but it's basically the same uh, it's, it's length and the same sharpness as a coyote tooth. And to simulate your dog, I have a piece of silicone rubber here, which is kind of soft and squishy and fleshy. And so what we'd like to do is be able to push it the same way a coyote might push on your dog when he's biting, but, but not have any holes in this rubber. So <clears throat> the uh, Kevlar that we use in the coyote vest was developed for the correctional industry. It's a stab resistant Kevlar. And if I just take one sheet of it here and push on it, what, what's happening here is it's wrapping around the spike. So indeed, the, the tooth is not really gonna probably go through that, but it's gonna wrap around the spike and probably still leave an injury to your dog. So we wanna avoid that. So if we just take two layers of this Kevlar and put them together and push on it, it's still kind of doing the same thing. It's wrapping around the tooth. So that's why on the sides of the coyote vest, we use a double laminated layer. So we take two layers of that Kevlar and we laminate it together with a special type of adhesive. And just like fiberglass, with the lamination now, it's much stronger than it ever was before. So now when I take this and push on it hard, it doesn't wrap around the tooth. And I'm putting a lot of weight on that, over 100 pounds of pressure. And it didn't wrap around there, and there's no injury to the rubber. So um, this will uh, presumably stop the coyote tooth from ripping open the sides of your dog if he should try and bite that way. Now, <clears throat> of course, we would prefer it if the coyote never bites the dog and this Kevlar never gets tested. So that's why we have these coyote whiskers that we put on the dog. And I've got a set right here that I can put on real fast. Uh, what I do with them, here they are. Okay, so here's the coyote whiskers. And 
These attach to the back of the vest with the Velcro. And first of all, um, this is going to change the appearance of your dog. Now these are actually just nylon bristles. They're not dangerous. They wouldn't hurt you or another dog or anybody else. But the coyote doesn't know that. For all the coyote knows, those are poison-tipped, deadly weapons. So the idea is that he's going to have to make a decision whether or not he wants to mess with that or not. And if he does, go ahead and decide to mess with it. Um, you can imagine this larger coyote coming in to strike my dog either around the neck or around the body. And this is not going to stop him. He's more than strong enough to push those out of the way. But he's going to have to close his eyes. It's an irritant. He's going to, I mean, this space that he was depending on is now occupied with this annoying whiskers. So it's going to perturb his attack in some respects. Not to mention that the instant he touches these, your dog will feel it and maybe have a chance to bark or run around or do something or take some evasive action. Without these or without the vest, the coyote, of course, would just come in immediately kill your dog, which is what happened to my dog, and we don't want that. So these whiskers are just going to slow it down and maybe even change the appearance so the coyote goes, yeah, I don't know about that. So that's the theory behind the whiskers. We can also add additional spikes down to the length of the vest, like this. And once again, the idea is to just make it extremely difficult for the coyote to come in here and bite anywhere without having one of these spikes hitting him in the mouth, either the top or the bottom of the mouth. <clears throat> One of the other big threats that our small dogs face is from predatory birds. And in order to make our dogs safe against a predatory bird, what we can do is use this new prototype. And we're going to have this in production very soon. This is an early prototype. And this is a simple pad that can fit right on top of your vest and it has matching Velcro, so everything just lines up. And <clears throat> what it does is it covers the whole back of your dog. Now I can put my whiskers back on if I want because all the Velcro is still in the same place as it was before. But what I've done now is without jeopardizing or without impacting the comfort of the vest or the mobility of your dog or uh, changing it in any way that the dog's really even going to notice this, that, that this is here, I've added this entire section of triple laminated Kevlar. So we have double laminated Kevlar here for the coyote's bite, and we have this triple laminated Kevlar for the talons of a bird of prey that might come in and attack. And the reason we're using a triple laminated for this pad, again, I'm going to go back to my silicone rubber to demonstrate this. And um, here's a piece of, a little sample piece of triple laminated Kevlar. And here I'm going to be using this ice pick. And you can see now that this is quite a bit sharper than the spike. This is actually much more like the tail on of a bird of prey. And um, a bird of prey, of course, is not going to be applying a steady pressure like it would be in the coyote vest. So here's the double laminated, like on the sides, and I'm going to take the ice pick and just apply steady pressure. And it's withstanding the pressure and protecting my dog from that coyote bite. But the bird of prey isn't going to be applying pressure. He's going to be flying out of the sky like that. And so the double laminated is probably not quite strong enough for the worst case scenario. That's why we have the triple laminated. So in this situation, I can line this up here. I can come flying out of the sky with my tail lines, hit that thing, and it won't go through. There is no hole here. And that's a sharp thing, and I hit it pretty hard, and I hit it pretty fast. So if you're worried about birds of prey, this hawk guard for lack of a better name right now, can be placed on the back of the dog and that would prevent the spearing action of those talons as they come down from the sky. And also these whiskers would be an irritant for a bird. And we could also have the spikes on here too 
And they're now actually faced a little more upwards towards the sky, so again, that would be a deterrent for the bird who is trying to get a, get a good grip on your dog and try and control it. So, uh, the last thing we have to demonstrate is our coyote zapper. And I'm actually going to do that in a separate video from this one. And that's really an interesting product. But these are basically the passive systems that we have available to try and help protect your dog from a coyote attack or from an attack from a bird of prey. Thank you for watching and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Bye-bye.